In this episode, it is the day of the dimes. Now, we have a $250 dime box here. They're not always my favorite to hunt because besides silver, there's not too much to look for. Sometimes, though, hunting the same denomination over and over again can get a little boring, so I decided to mix it up and grab this box of dimes. I guess it's a good thing I went with my gut feeling because I took a quick peek inside and I saw some really amazing stuff, so let me show you what the rolls look like inside this box. So here we have it, $250, 50 rolls of dimes. At least hopefully that's what it is. Now, I didn't get a chance to inspect each and every single roll, but when I was taking a quick look, I did notice this right here. Now, I'm pretty sure we can all see that this is a silver ender. So this hunt is already off to an amazing start. I am super stoked. Um, some of the other rolls look pretty good, but I thought that I would open this roll up and we could all see what this is together. Actually, before I can open this roll up, I would really appreciate it if you all would hit that thumbs up and subscribe if you're new and you'd like to see more coin roll hunting and coin collecting videos just like this. And then what do you say? We see what we got. Well, time to get to work, guys. Let this hunt begin. Oh, they really wrapped this up and made this a challenge to get into, so hopefully... It'll be worth it. Let's see. With these uh with these clear rolls, you gotta find the good entrance point here on the tape. We got some thick masking tape on this one. Now, let's do a quick inner search. Definitely some interesting stuff in there. We can see one US for sure. Now what side is it? This side. So let's drop this here. And let's see what we got, guys. Oh my, it's going to be a Georgie. We got a George head. And what is it? I think that is a... Let's get a little bit closer. Sorry, having some trouble. A 1949 George head, guys. To start this hunt off as an ender. That is incredible. Oh my. This is the second ever silver ender I've ever gotten coin roll hunting. So this is awesome. We got silver to start this hunt off. Even if we don't find anything else, I am very happy. It's a George head too. You know, these are getting very rare here in Canada. So I'm going to go through the rest of this roll. These other ones here are most likely nickel. None of them are looking too crazy, but we have that US there. And we have some other rolls that are looking very interesting as well. So wish me luck. Hopefully we can strike some more silver. And this hunt is off to a great start. Here at roll number three, and we got a couple in here that are looking pretty suspect, but especially this dark one right here. If you got one that's that black, it's either going to be a fire coin or it's going to be silver. So let's see. If I cannot pull, oh yeah, we got another silver here, guys. This one is only gonna be a 50 percenter, but we just struck ourselves. Oh, look at how dirty that is on the back. We just struck ourselves and fished ourselves out a mackerel, 67 centennial dime. So we already have two silvers. Let's see if maybe we can break our record. This is the last of the clear rolls right here. I think we're around roll 20, and I didn't even spot this one by the edge, but we got ourselves our third silver of this hunt, guys. That's going to be a 1954 young head. So three silvers. I think I've tied my record for silvers and dime hunts. I'm really hoping I can break it. We got nothing but paper rolls up ahead, so I can't really do any more inner checks or edge checks. I can only do the edge checks as I pull them out of the rolls, but I'm really hoping maybe there'll be some more good stuff in there. I'm also making sure to check for 1970s, and you should also check because there are also uh, proofs and silver proofs and stuff like that for the later years, but... This is awesome, guys. What a great hunt so far. Getting to about the halfway mark now. I almost missed this right here. Now, this is one of the really great things you can look for hunting dimes here in Canada. Very hard to miss, especially when it's in this kind of condition. I don't know if somebody x that out on purpose or what happened there, but I'll still hold on to it nonetheless. But we got ourselves a 1970. Now, this is what I would consider to be the key date of Canadian dimes. Now, this is minted around 5 million. Every other Canadian dime post-1970 is extremely high mintage. Even 1991, 1997, some of the other denominations have lower mintages for 
those years, but this one right here, only the 1970 is the low mintage. So definitely keep an eye out for this one. This is a great find on its own, even though it's not silver. Let's see if maybe we can find another one of these or we can keep our silver streak going. Really starting to get down to the nitty gritty. I think we got about six or seven rolls left to go. Haven't found anything too crazy going on the rest of this hunt, but we just pulled this right here, which is a 1969. So two things you can look for with 1969. You can look for the large date variation, which I believe there are only nine or 10 known to have ever have been made. And if you can find that one, that's worth tens of thousands of dollars most likely. So I will throw this under the scope just to give you guys a look at what the small date most likely looks like. Cause most likely if you find a 1969, it's gonna be a small date. Don't get your hopes up. But another cool thing you can look for in the 1968s and the 1969s is in the region which are these little dimples here on the sides of the coin they uh split it between the two years 1968 and 1969 they split the mintage between ottawa and philadelphia actually so depending on how you look at the reading under the microscope depending on how the grooves go in there in the reading you can tell if it was minted in philadelphia in the united states or if it was minted here in the ottawa mint in canada i'm not too too sure why exactly they split the uh the manufacturing process those years but very interesting i consider it pretty interesting at least so let's throw this thing under the microscope and see what we are dealing with here just to give you guys a little bit of an idea here 1969 the date would be a little bit larger and it would almost probably appear like there was some doubling if it was the large date but this you can tell small date with what looks to me like a little bit of pitting going on there in the date as well we are here at roll 46. I thought the silver streak had dried up and I didn't spot this one by the edge either, but man, is it our lucky day, guys. We have beaten our record here. We got ourselves another young head, 1958. That's four silvers in this hunt. I can't believe that. That is very, very nice. A lot of... Uh, Definitely worth a lot more than the 10 cent investment that we put into it. And I'm very happy, guys, because a lot of the time you come up completely empty when you hunt dimes. You know, they have been religiously hunted over the years. So the fact that here in 2020, we are still able to find multiple silvers in coin roll hunts in boxes or rolls is a great sign. It gives me great faith in the future of coin roll hunting. And this is awesome. So I'm going to finish off these last few rolls and then we will wrap this up for you guys. This right here is the last roll, and I really didn't expect to find much, but doing the edge check, I did spot this right here. So I thought I would pull it out. Oh, yeah, that's that's what I thought it was. It's a diadem, but what year is it going to be? A little hard to see there. I think that is a 66, so this is going to be an 80 percenter, guys. Five silvers this is going to be a pretty epic wrap up for a dime hunt i've never found anything like this before in terms of silver this is absolutely awesome i still need to go through the rest of this roll i don't think there's anything else in there so if there isn't i will wrap this up for you guys i have concluded this hunt before i start breaking down all of these amazing finds for you guys i would really appreciate once again if you would hit that thumbs up and subscribe if you're new and you'd like to see more videos just like this so i would say this is probably the most successful dime hunt hunt i have ever had i found all sorts of good stuff from silver to low mintage to these right here so i'm very excited to be able to bring you guys this breakdown so right here we got a pile of 1968s. I think I got four or five of them, and we have one 1969. The reason I hold on to these, even though they aren't silver, is because they are nickel bullion and because they have the different readings. So they have the difference between the Ottawa reading and the Philadelphia. So you'll have different mintage figures on that and stuff like that. So even though they aren't silver, even though they aren't the lowest mintage, I still recommend you hold on to them because they do have a variety, they do have a variation, and I would always suggest holding on to the 69s just in case you miss out and you might have that large date it could be very very valuable this right here is definitely the low mintage fine of this hunt it is looking a little worse for wear but that is okay i will so gladly accept it into my collection because it is extremely low mintage five million i believe is the range so if you find one of these hold on to it it is always great to stack up 1970s when it comes to most canadian coin denominations 
Well, as far as dime hunts go, I don't think it gets much better than this, guys. Five silvers. We got ourselves some low mintage. We got ourselves some 68 to 69. I can't really complain about this one. Sometimes you can really strike out when it comes to the dimes. You can get ARP rolls. You can get uncirculated boxes. So it can really kind of deter you from even wanting to do it. But finding this many silvers in this hunt has really kind of invigorated me to keep at it. And you never know what you can find. You just got to be willing to search the rolls and you can find amazing stuff just like this right here this is almost 15 20 dollars worth of silver dimes right here for only a 50 cent investment that's not too bad if you ask me in today's episode we have a dime hunt for you guys now i went to a few different branches and picked up a bunch of different bundles and i actually had this box left over from one of my last hunts so i just threw them all in there but one of the interesting things about this hunt is i picked up rolls from the new bank that i just signed up for so i'm very curious to see what kind of luck i'm going to have with those rolls they're all customer wrapped rolls so we are looking good hopefully we can find some silver maybe we can find some 1970s other than that with canadian dimes there's not too much else to find but hopefully we can get lucky and find some more silver because we've been on a bit of a hot streak lately with dimes before i do get into this i'd really appreciate it if you all would hit that thumbs up and subscribe for more coin roll hunting and coin collecting videos just like this and then what do you say we start busting into this box we are at roll 12 right now and i was starting to get a little bit worried we haven't found anything yet but we just spotted ourselves a pretty suspect looking edge here so look at that guys boom Roll 12, and we have struck in our first silver already. It may be a little grimy and dirty, but we got ourselves a 1967 50% mackerel. So we are on the board with one silver already. Our streak continues. Let's see if we can keep it going. I am stoked. All right. Well, I have concluded this hunt, and I've also decided to turn this into a dime box series so what i'm going to do is right after i wrap this up and show you some of these other cool finds i'm going to go into another hunt and then possibly another one after that until i feel like i've accumulated enough good stuff to make a pretty cool video out of it and that's pretty much what you got to do when it comes to dimes because sometimes the hunts can come up a little dry but you just got to make the best of it so let's show you some of these awesome finds that i managed to pull today besides this 1967 centennial mackerel which is just a beaut. I am happy to be able to pull silver anytime. You can never complain about that. And I'll be able to add that to my yearly silver accumulation. But besides that one right there, which is the find of this hunt, we have a nice stack of nickel 1968s. The reason I hold on to those is because the mintage was split between Ottawa and Philadelphia that year. They made some of them here in Canada. They made some of them in the United States. The only way you can identify it is from the reading. One of them will have deeper notches in the grooves of the reading. We also found this right here, a nice little interesting foreign coin that we found at the very end of the hunt. It's very hard to tell underneath all the grime there, but it is in East Caribbean states. 10 cents i believe which we have found many of in the past so nothing too crazy to write home about and what is debatably another find of this hunt guys this right here is just beautiful this is a 1989 and look at the quality of that strike right there i think this is probably a proof or a specimen or something along those lines because look at right there it's not frosty but it might also be a business strike that is possible but it could have come out of an uncirculated roll, but it is very rare that you find dimes this old and this good of shape. So I slabbed it up here in this flip, and I'm going to hold on to this for sure. If you guys want to let me know what you think of this in the comments, I would appreciate it greatly. And then what do you say? I start busting into hunt number two and see if we're going to be doing a box or rolls because I don't even know yet. That's going to be in the future. So let's take you guys to well, that. Is this a whole lot of dime rolls or is this a whole lot of dime rolls? Now, I came up a little dry in my last hunt. We only fished out that one mackerel silver, so I decided to up the ante a little bit for this hunt. And I went to a few different branches and grabbed a huge variety here of assorted dime rolls. So I'm really hoping by mixing it up that maybe I can get a little bit more success. And the only way we can find out is by tearing into these bad boys right here. So I'm going to start this off, start going through and see if maybe I can find any more silver or low mintage good stuff. Roll number three, and we already got our first foreign find here. We got ourselves 
an East Caribbean States 10 cents. So we've seen this one before, but this one is in pretty darn good shape for making it all the way over here. So we are on the board and let's hope maybe we can find something a little bit better or interesting than that. Well, we have looked through a ton of rolls already. I think I'm somewhere about halfway through this hunt and look what we just found guys. Luckily it is not going to be in vain. We have pulled silver. So this right here, 1964, very common year, but listen to that light little ping right there. You gotta love that. So we are on the board. I pulled some nickel 1968, found a few 1969s that are most likely small dates, so nothing too special, but I will throw this up here and we will keep chugging along and pray maybe we will be blessed with some more silver. Just passing the halfway mark here, we just found our second foreign find of this hunt. We have found a few of these. This is going to be a British five pence. So, our second foreign find to add to the board. It's in pretty good shape, but I have accumulated quite a few of these in the past, so it is not the craziest find ever. But this right here, I don't really want to manhandle it too much, but I'll see... I did find a 1970 that is in amazing condition. This is 1972, so I have a feeling this might be a proof like or something like that. I don't want to touch the insides with my fingers, but look at that mere reflective finish. It has a very nice quality strike, so of all the dimes I've gone through of this age, I'd say this right here is something special at least look at that mere reflective finish for such an old dime crazy we got another foreign find here guys i actually spotted this on the rim it was much thicker than the other dimes in here but i just thought i would look through the roll but wow this is an awesome design on this too i think this is from poland but i'm not too too sure but this is a 20 groski so a very cool foreign coin to add to the pile. I think this is our third one. This may be from the Czech Republic after, actually. I didn't, can't really read that. It's a little far, but 2015. Very nice. Well, starting to really get down to the nitty gritty here. I only got two bundles left, and we ain't looking too, too good. But I did just spot this thick rim here, so I thought I'd pull it out and discover together what it is. Well, it looks like another five pence, but... This one looks to be a good deal older than that other one. So I'm pretty sure this is still going to be just regular nickel uh, composition or something like that, or possibly steel. But it's nice to have some variation when it comes to finding these older foreign coins. So I'll add this with the other foreign finds. I think this is the fourth one now. And we'll finish off these last two bundles or 20 rolls and see if maybe we can get lucky and finish this little hunt off on a high note. I have concluded this hunt. Before I start wrapping it all up, I would really appreciate if you once again would hit that thumbs up and subscribe for more videos just like this. You know, this is definitely a record for me. I have gone through thousands and thousands of dimes tonight. In the past, I think the most I've ever hunted in a single hunt was somewhere from $300 to $400, and tonight I hunted almost... $700 in loose rolls. So this was definitely more than two boxes, almost three boxes worth of dimes. And we came up pretty dry. We only got one silver. But you know, this is the reality of coin roll hunting, not only in Canada, but the United States when it comes to dimes and quarters is the silver well is drying up real quick. It's still out there, but you're not always going to get lucky. You're not always going to be able to find it. So I'm glad that we did get to find one silver dime at least because you know, if we didn't find that this whole hunt pretty much would have been in vain. But considering in the last hunt, we only found one silver too. Um, I think this is a sign to mix it up. Maybe Maybe hunt some quarters or find something else to hunt but let me break down some of these cool finds for you guys right now so right here i have a pretty big pile of 1968s the reason that i decided to hold on to these is because in the year 1968 and 1969 the royal canadian mint split the mintage between philadelphia and the united states and ottawa here in canada the way you can identify the difference is between the reading the reading being the little slits in the sides of the coin if you look under a microscope you should be able to tell the difference if you know what to look for we found one 1968 that is in 
amazing condition. This is probably one of the better 1968s I found. So I'm not too sure if it's proof like or if it's just been floating around and hasn't been gone through too many pockets or hands or whatever. But a pretty nice one. I might slab that up after. We have over here a nice little pile of 1969s. Now, the 1969 Canadian dime is somewhat low mintage. Like I said with the 68, the mintage was split between Ottawa and Philadelphia. And there's also a super rare variation known as the large date. But there's only a few of those ever known to have been made. And they're worth tens of thousands of dollars. So I mean, this is about guarantee we don't have them here. But I always hold on to the 69s anyways. And then let's take you guys through some of these foreign coins that we managed to pull here today right here we have that early date british pence most likely it's british i think it could have come from possibly scotland or ireland but i don't think so and then we have the more modern five pence this is in good shape and i do believe if you put all of the british decimal coins together for this set that they make a shield so that'd be pretty cool to see at some point if i can get all those together i have most of them at this point we have this right here the east caribbean states 10 cents we pulled quite a few of these in the past so you know it ain't nothing too too crazy to write home about but in pretty good shape this is probably the foreign find of this hunt pretty cool the 20 Groski now it's a little more recent, so it's definitely not silver or anything, but a nice design, especially there on the, I'm not even too sure what the reverse and what the obverse are, but I really like that one. Very reflective, mirror-like finish on that. And then we have this right here, guys. This is going to be the find of this hunt, this single little lonely young head silver dime. In today's episode, we have a dime box hunt for you guys. I went to a CIBC branch and I picked up this box of dimes here. I opened it up when I was in my car, took a little look inside, and we have ourselves a whole lot of paper and plastic customer wrapped rolls, which means hopefully we are in business. I haven't really checked any of the rolls yet for inners, but I did check for enders, didn't see anything too, too crazy there. I'm really holding out some hope. Maybe I can find some silver in this hunt. It has been a few weeks since I've been able to hunt dimes, so I'm really jonesing for a good dime hunt, but... I'll also be looking for any NIFCs, maybe some proof specimens, anything like that would be just lovely. Also, the 1970 is a key date. I'll be looking for that one as well. But before I can start tearing into this bad boy right here, I would really appreciate if you guys would hit that thumbs up and subscribe for more coin collecting and coin roll hunting videos just like this. Now, without further ado, what do you say we tear this bad boy open and see what goodies we can find today? Let this hunt begin. All right, guys, I've made some serious progress in this hunt. I actually only have about 12 rolls left to go. These two rows and these two rolls right here. I've searched all of these rolls. I've just been putting little X's on the end of all of the plastic rolls that I've searched already. So if you ever happen to find a plastic roll with a little X, it probably means that I've searched them or at least another hunter has. And I'm just flipping over these paper rolls to let myself know that they have been searched as well. You definitely don't want to already search through a roll that you've looked through. And so far, this has been a bit of a skunk hunt. It's a little bit disappointing. The only thing that I have really found so far is this little pile of nickel 1968s. I made sure to hit them all with the magnet and they came up in nothing nada. And we got ourselves one 1969. I like to hold on to the 1969s just in case one day I miss it and I can get an expert to look at them and tell me maybe just maybe if I have one of those large dates. But I'm pretty sure there's only six 1969 large dates known to exist. So the chance of ever actually finding one is pretty much slim to nil. But I'm tuning you guys in here because I actually found a pretty decent little key date here. We just found ourselves a 1970. Now this is a decent key date for most of the Canadian denominations, but it is definitely rare for dimes. I don't find them too often. I believe it is minted somewhere around 10 million. Let's see how the Queen's bust looks on this one. That's not too bad. A lot of the time the Queen will be all scratched up on these 1970s. A lot of theories on why that is, but this is a nice key date right here. I'll throw this bad boy up on the board. I'm gonna keep going, finish these last few rolls off and pray to the coin gods for a little bit of silver.
Well, guys, four rolls left to go. They are all up here, these four clear rolls in the top corner. The rest of this box has been searched, and I just wanted to show you guys this right here. Now, first off, I just wanted to show you guys all of the different edges that you can deal with when you're coin roll hunting dimes. Sometimes it can be super hard to edge hunt. You can see we have one US there. We have a couple, let's see, what looks like fire coins here dark rims on these ones these will throw you off a lot of the time because sometimes silver will have a darker rim but this right here guys it looks super suspect i've seen a couple extremely bright nickel edges in this hunt i think this might be another bright nickel edge right there but this one is almost mistakably silver i thought i would pull it out and we could see oh yes lordy we got ourselves a 10 cent mackerel dime and oh my lord, look at the condition on this bad boy right here. That is a nice one. Very nice. That was uh, that was very obvious by the edge right there. I could tell that this was silver. As soon as I saw the edge when I pulled it out, that is awesome, guys. We got silver. I think it's only 50%. I don't think they made these in 80%. I think they're only 50 percenters. But it's a great find. I think I've only found a few of these bad boys in the past. So definitely nice. I will add it up there with a couple of my other finds. I will finish these last few rolls I have off. And then I will tune you guys back in. But man, am I a happy hunter right now. We scored a silver. Hopefully there will be one more or another treasure lying within these rolls. But if not, I'll wrap it up. Well, that's all she wrote for this one, guys. I have concluded this hunt. Before I start wrapping up all of these awesome finds, I would really appreciate if you guys would hit that thumbs up and subscribe if you have not and you would like to see more videos just like this. We managed to score ourselves quite a few nickel 1968s. Now, I like to just count out how many that I actually find in the hunt. And then most likely, I will just throw the 68 back into circulation. Now, I do want to note that in the year 1968, they actually split the mintage up on the Canadian dimes between the Ottawa Mint and the Philadelphia Mint. And I believe this is because they switched the composition. They might have been a little bit overwhelmed. So they outsourced some of the work to Philadelphia. So there are two different variations. You can tell the variations by looking under the microscope at the reading. And that will determine the difference between the different mints. I think there's a different in spaces. There might be a little bit more space for the Philadelphia or vice versa. You got to look into it yourself. But neither of them are particularly rare. And the nickel 1968s are definitely not that rare, so that is why I throw them back. But this is a pretty nice looking one right here. It hasn't had too much damage. A lot of the time, people will actually scratch out the queen's bust to let other coin roll hunters know that it is not a silver 1968. But anyways, it looks like we got about five of those in this hunt. We also got one 1969. Now, I mentioned that I like to hold on to my 69s just so in the future... I can maybe get an expert or somebody that's a little bit better than I am at looking at these varieties or errors, and maybe they can determine a little better than me if they're the large or small dates, but they all look pretty much the same to me from all the ones that I've checked. So if I was to find a large date, I would probably have to have some comparisons on hand, but some of these varieties can be really tricky to detect, especially if you are a newbie. So maybe you should just hold on to them and check them in the future. But we also managed to score a nice key date in this hunt, a 1970 dime. I think this is the third or fourth one I've found in my career so far. And I have searched quite a few dimes. I would say I've searched tens or if not hundreds of thousands of dimes and only found a couple. So it's very rare, very hard to find. Definitely keep your eyes out for those Canadian 1970s because they are all quite, quite rare. But we also managed to get ourselves silver in this hunt. Hi-ho, silver away. We got ourselves... A silver mackerel dime. This one is in great shape too. And it's not too much in silver value. I think it's only worth about two bucks. This one has a really nice cameo on the obverse. I'd say that's definitely at least a cameo. If not heavy cameo on that bad boy. These don't really have any extra numismatic value. Unless they're like MS65 or higher. But it's a nice old silver dime. I will definitely take it. It keeps my ratio at about one silver per box. This would be a bit of a skunker. If not for this bad boy right here. In today's episode, we have a dime hunt for you guys. Now, I went to two banks. At the first bank, I picked up this box. And when I opened it up and checked inside, half of the box was actually filled 
with what looked to me like ARP rolls. So I went to another bank right after, picked up another 25 rolls to complete this box. So we have a full box to hunt today. Some of these rolls have some really weird looking kind of green painter's tape on it. But uh, I did see some numbers on there, like 21. So, hey, maybe we'll get lucky. There'll be like 19, 21 silver dimes in there. But I seriously doubt it. But there's not too much to look for when it comes to Canadian dimes. Really, after the year 1968, all you're looking for is 1970s. That is the key date. But we're going to be looking for silver. Maybe we can get a 67 silver. Maybe we can get something a little older than that. But I'm really holding out some hope. It's been a little while since we've done a dime hunt, so I'm really excited for this one. Before I can start tearing into this box, I would really appreciate if you guys would hit that thumbs up and subscribe for more coin roll hunting, coin collecting videos just like this. I'd also like to mention that I do have two bundles off to the side of clear rolls, and I did see a few inners that look promising. When I do get to those, I will show you as I come along. I think I have 15 rolls on the side, but first I'm going to get into this box, then I'm going to hit up those loose rolls. What do you say we start this hunt off with a bang? Let this hunt begin. All right, I am bringing you guys in. I'm about nine rolls down right now. I'm just flipping over all the rolls that I have gone through. And I haven't found anything too, too crazy yet. I did find one 1968. Made sure to check it with the magnet. And it is a nickel dime. And I did find one 1977 that is looking pretty close to an MS state. And it has a really nice cameo on the obverse. So I'm going to hold on to this one. And I did find two 1969s. Now, I did throw these under the microscope. And it is a little tricky with these 1969s. But as far as I can tell, they are both the small dates. That one right there is a little worn out. So it's a little harder to tell. But nothing too crazy. But what I am bringing you in for right now is we have our first foreign find of this hunt it is going to be a british five pence which is a very typical coin you find when you are hunting dimes it has a little bit thicker of a rim so i could see as soon as i pulled it out of the roll but i always hold on to these foreign finds one day maybe i'll sell it to the coin shop or i'll just uh, save it until maybe one day i go over and take a take a trip over the pond to the united kingdom and i'll spend it there but we got a nice little foreign find. We're on the board. I'm going to hold on to the 68s and the 69s and keep going through. See if we can find ourselves some more goodies. All right, guys. I just opened up the 10th roll and we have a coin here that is looking very promising. So I thought I would pull it out and we would see what we have together here. Let's take a little look. See. Oh, that is looking promising. It's not a young head, but I think this is definitely a silver guys what year is that i think it's 1968 so i'm gonna throw it down right there and let's check it with the magnet but i am 99.9% .9 sure that we just got our first silver of this hunt guys a boom we are on the board the date is so small and so worn out there i can't see if it's a 68 or a 66 but it is a diadem obverse but man, only 10 rolls in. We already got our first silver. It's a little scratched up, but we will take it. We still got lots to go here. One of the tricky things about hunting coins in Canada is sometimes the nickel edges can actually throw you off. Like this right here looks like it could almost be another silver, but I'm almost willing to bet that that one. Let's actually pull this out and take a look. What is this? 1975. So see right there, that one looks pretty similar, but that right there is not a silver. But you can be very easily tricked into thinking that one of these silver coins is a nickel coin when you are hunting dimes here in Canada. But man, am I a happy hunter? I've been on a bit of a dry streak when it comes to silver lately. We just broke the streak. Now I'm going to keep going through this roll, keep going through this box, tune you guys back in if I find anything else just like this bad boy right here. All right, I am two rolls down from that last fine. And we have something that looks pretty interesting here. At first, when I pulled this out, I thought it might be a silver. I already took a little look at it. And then when I pulled it out, I realized that this is not actually a coin at all. This is a token. I have uh, seen these before. I don't know what this is made of, but I believe it's aluminum. But this is a Toronto Transit token. And I'm not too sure the year, but I'm not too sure how much they are worth either. But I do not think that it is worth 10 cents. So... It might be a bit of a loss, but that's okay. It's still a pretty interesting little find here. I will hold on to. Pretty cool. 
You don't see these too often when you are coin roll hunting, but it fits in pretty well with the dimes in there, pretty similar size. But I'll throw this up on the board. I'll keep going along and tune you guys in if we find anything else. All right, guys, I am just one roll down and it looks like we have another foreign coin. I don't know what is going on here. If someone is playing games with me, someone loaded this box up with all these foreigns on purpose. But let's pull this out. Oh, yeah. I know exactly what this bad boy is. This is a Jamaican $1 2014. I'm not too sure how this translates in terms of the exchange rate, but I think it may be a loss. But it is still a pretty cool coin. This one is looking pretty frosty there on the reverse. This must, of course, be the obverse. But pretty cool coin to find here it has a thick rim so that may also be a 20 cent loss it has almost the width of two dimes in there but i'm still gonna hold on to it like i hold on to all my foreign finds and i'll keep going through this roll see if i can't find anything else get in there all right i'm starting to get pretty close to the halfway mark now and i just found something pretty interesting here now i don't know how i missed this on the edge check because it is quite a bit wider than the other dimes but this right here is actually pretty cool this is a 1958 republic of venezuela five centimos so when i saw this i was really excited and i went online and looked it up because i thought maybe this was silver but after looking it up it is actually made of copper nickel so it is not silver but it is the oldest uh, coin so far in this hunt and it has a pretty cool design right there i don't know which is the obverse or the reverse but i'd say this is probably the reverse right there but a pretty cool coin to add to the board with our huge pile of other foreign coins we have i have them all scattered all over the place up there but this hunt is going quite splendidly i'll keep going along and see if maybe we have some more foreign coins or maybe just maybe some more silver to top this hunt off Alrighty guys, we are really getting down to the nitty gritty. I got less than 10 rolls left to go. We haven't found anything too, too interesting. A few more 68s, a few more 69s, but I did just find something that's looking very interesting. Now this may look like a shiny new dime to you guys, but this is an 86 dime. And if you look at that finish on there, that is so reflective that I'm gonna say this has to be either a specimen or a proof to be in this kind of condition. Ugh, I don't want to handle it too much because I'm going to get my dirty fingers all over it. But this is one of the nicest old dimes that I have found um, between the years of 1970 and 1980. That is in great shape. It looks almost better than some of the, uh, the new dimes that I found in here. So I'm definitely going to hold on to this bad boy. Look at that finish right there. And look at that blue nose. That is a very pronounced strike. So I think this is a specimen. If you guys want to let me know what you think, let me know down in the comments below. But I'm going to throw this up on the board. Keep going along. Pray for some more silver. And if not, maybe some other goodies. Well, I have completed this box. And unfortunately, we did not find any silver, especially in those green tape rolls. We didn't find anything good in there. But this hunt is not over yet. We still have a few more rolls to hunt. These are clear rolls. That's why I saved these for last because they are very annoying. The only thing that I found that is interesting at all is I found this, which is kind of an interesting toner. It's a little hard to see there, but it's definitely got some interesting tones going on. But I'm guessing this is most likely artificial toning on there caused by fire, or flame, or heat. But uh, the reverse on this doesn't have any of that toning going on. So I'm not too sure, but it looks pretty cool. I don't come across dimes with toning like this very often. So I'll definitely hold on to this. But we got a few more rolls to go. These clear rolls are a little tricky. When you check them for inners, a lot of the time you can see US. And a lot of the time it's really hard to spot the silver because these nickel coins will really stand out. And they can look a lot like silver. I'm not too sure if you guys can see those. But the nickel coins are definitely a lot brighter than their steel counterparts. And they can throw you off a little bit. But I checked all of the inners on all these rolls. And we have a few promising looking dimes in here. But... Let's start getting into these and we'll see if maybe we can top this hunt off with a little more silver. But you know, it hasn't been too bad so far. We got some good stuff. Let's get into these rolls. Alrighty guys, I have concluded this hunt. Before I start wrapping up all of these awesome finds, I'd really appreciate one more time if you guys would hit that thumbs up and subscribe if you have not and you'd like to see more videos just like this. And let's show you the goodies we managed to score today.
So I made sure to keep off all of the 1968s in this hunt, even the ones that are made of nickel. Um, a lot of people aren't aware, but in the year 1968 for the Canadian dimes, we actually contracted the Philadelphia Mint in the United States to make some of the nickel dimes. I don't know if it's because we split the composition between silver and nickel, and they had a hard time with that, but I made sure to hold on to all of my nickel 1968. I counted nine in total. Now, that being said, I also like to hold on to my 1969 dimes because they are also made of nickel and they have a very rare variety for 1969 called the large date now when it comes to actually finding this variety it can be really hard especially if you're just finding one at a time and looking it under your scope so my suggestion is actually to stock the 1969 dimes up and then look at them all when you have about a roll's worth or when you have like 10 or more i would say and then that way you can kind of compare the dates on them and if any of them really stand out then you can really have something substan and if any of them stand out, you can have something substantial to actually base what you think the large date is off of rather than just throwing a random 1969 under the scope and being like, whoa, whoa, I have a large date. I mean, chances are 99.99999% of the time you do not have a 1969 large date. Now, we found some really cool tokens and foreign coins in this hunt. We have this Toronto Transit token. Now, I am not too sure of the year, but it looks pretty old. It looks like it could be from... Anywhere from the 60s to the 80s, I would say. But hey, it could even be pretty recent. I'm not sure when they instituted electronic payments and regular coins on the transit systems. But pretty cool little token there. We got that Jamaican $1. Found a few of those in my hunts in the past. We got ourselves that really cool 5 centimos. Now, unfortunately, it is not made of silver. That would make it a little cooler. But it is an oldie, 1958. I do believe it's the oldest coin that we found in this hunt. So this is a cool little foreign coin. I will add to my foreign book and collection. We found ourselves two British five pence. I found one more a little bit later in the hunt. Not as nice as the first one, but they are pretty common to find in your dime hunts because the rims on them are pretty thick. So sometimes people will throw them in that way. They can get away with shorting a couple of dimes in the rolls, those scoundrels. We found ourselves a really cool toner in this hunt. I don't find toner dimes too often. Most likely I'm banking on this being artificially toned, but that's still all right. I will take it even though someone may have tampered with it themselves. It has a little bit of a gross reverse on it, but still pretty cool. Now, I found a few what look like uncirculated dimes. Now, this one is gonna be in the worst condition. This one is in slightly better condition. And this one is that dime that I said looks like a specimen. Now, most likely I'm gonna throw these two back because they aren't looking too nice, but I actually kept them here just to kind of show you guys how much this one stands out. Now, I'm just gonna to touch it one more time. I'm sorry if you guys are cringing at me touching this bad boy right here, but for the date of being an 80s dime, this thing is extremely lustrous. It has an amazing cameo. I'm guessing that it came out of a proof set. If you guys wanna let me know what your theory is down below, I would appreciate that, but it stands out much more than the other uh, 80s and 70s dimes that I found in this hunt, even the ones looking really nice. And honestly, it looks a lot nicer than even some of the 2000 stuff that I found. So this is definitely a keeper. I'm going to throw it in a flip right after this hunt. Just look at that blue nose right there. That is just a punchy blue nose. And then, guys, we found ourselves silver in this hunt. Now, we didn't find a lot of silver, and I got a little bit closer of a look at this, and it is a 1968. So it is a 50 percenter but I'm not gonna complain, silver is silver. And we found all these other goodies as well. This was a pretty fun hunt. You know, dimes can be a little dry when it comes to Canadian, but when you find these foreign coins, when you find a little bit of silver, when you find stuff like this really nice specimen over there, it can really spice up your hunt. So I hope you guys enjoyed this hunt. If you wanna let me know what your favorite find was down in the comments, I'd appreciate that. I'd like to thank you all so, so much for watching guys. Until the next one, everybody, Peace out and have a good one, y'all.